This is Guerrero, Southwest Mexico. Me gustaría que mi hijo viviera en un lugar más seguro, que creciera este tranquilo, sin andar con miedo. Mariela is a paramedic in a metropolis scorched by violence. And Luis is a body collector in the most violent city in a violent land. Creo que no es justo que un niño o a la edad de mis niños estén viendo situaciones de esas ejecutado, decapitado, todo tipo de casos de muerte violenta. We talk to some of those behind the violence, fueled by drugs and organized crime. They murder each other, they kill innocent people, they decapitate innocent people, they hang innocent people. This is a story of ordinary people living and dying on Mexico's front line. The story of a country at war with itself. It's around midnight at a convenience store in Acapulco. So far, so ordinary. A child is playing on the floor. Suddenly, a man enters, pursued by another, who wants to kill him. He's wrestled outside, then shot. Imagine the terror of the shop workers as the assassin tries to finish him off. But his pistol jams. Reloaded, the gunman returns and shoots him again. He dies 30 minutes later. First on the scene is paramedic Mariela Chimeo, unable to save another victim of Mexico's gang wars. Mariela's worked Acapulco streets for almost a decade. Her job is to help save lives, but too often these days, she's just counting bodies. She's on her way to another gangland hit, and at the wheel of the ambulance is her colleague and husband, Jorge. Al parecer reportan un masculino tirado en el interior, se desconoce si We follow behind. Buenas noches, oficial. Buenas noches. Paramédico de protección civil, está acá. ¿Nos permite pasar a ver el punto? Pero ahorita, ¿cómo se debe de permitir el punto? Sí, este, parece que reportan una persona, una persona del sexo masculino, que lo vinieron a tirar aquí en el interior del panteón. Shot and dumped, the indignity of it all. And on hand, the military and police, but seemingly powerless to stop the carnage. This, another murder that shames Mexico. Sí, ya no se va a poder hacer nada por él. Está, al parecer, sin signos vitales, ya. Generalmente, de, de cada 10 casos, 8 ya son las personas que encontramos en el lugar que ya fallecieron. Last year, more Mexicans were murdered in gang violence than in any year on record, close to 30,000. So far, 2018's shaping up to be bloodier. Ya se ha perdido eso, lo bonito de Acapulco, que salían las personas a las calles a comprar, a pasear. Ahora nada más están esperando a que llegue la tarde, oscurezca y se oculten en sus casas, no salgan. Y es una, como dicen ustedes, una tristeza ver cómo ha crecido la ola de violencia, tantas personas, tantos cadáveres. Luis Flores works in Acapulco's morgue. And what a job it is. A father of two and a trainee nurse, he comes to this hell every day.
You have to carefully pick your way through the litter of decaying corpses. We can see that there are bodies all over here. The capacity is, what, 100 bodies? Sadly, because of the violence that we've they've experienced here, it's 320 or something here. So there are bodies on the floor, not refrigerated, of course. The capacity in the fridge, um, it's just overloaded. That's how difficult the situation is here for the authorities in Acapulco. Just noticed a tag here on one of the body bags. Nombre desconocido, which means it's unidentified. Uh, and at the bottom it says Fecha, 13th of uh, July 2017. So that's when the body was found uh, more than six months ago. No identification, no one knows who's it, who it is, and nobody's come to claim it. Most are young men, shot or stabbed some beheaded and mutilated. Victims of turf wars between rival gangs keen to display their depravity as a warning to others. How difficult is it dealing with the numbers of homicides here? Pero sí, tener muchos cadáveres, estar a diario abriendo un refri y abriendo otro, claro que afecta porque ves y ves la magnitud del problema, la, la magnitud de la situación en la que estamos viviendo. And it's a job someone has to do, cleaning Acapulco streets, for which he gets paid little more than 500 US dollars a month. Vamos, nos dirigimos hacia la calle Morteros, en la colonia La Laja. Ahí este, se suscitó un evento, hay una persona privada de la vida en vía pública. The gangs aren't afraid of anyone. This man's body has been dumped in broad daylight. Sometimes the killers are just teenagers, offered $50 to pull a trigger. But this man shows signs of being tortured. This is a work we do day to day in our work. This a esto nos dedicamos y es triste ver cómo cómo este cómo personas de nuestro puerto de Acapulco son privadas de la vida y como pudimos ver este tiradas se pudiera decir literalmente este en las calles en las calles del puerto de Acapulco en realidad es una tristeza una una pena muy lamentable pero pues Back at the morgue, Luis helps the doctors, trying to determine the cause of death. But is anyone in Mexico seriously trying to determine how the country can escape this cycle of violence? Foreigners used to flock to Acapulco for tequila and sunshine. Now it's mostly Mexican tourists that fill the hotels. Army boots on the ground haven't reassured many Americans, advise this city is as dangerous as Syria or Afghanistan. But Mexico is a land of competing realities. And Mariella and Jorge, for just under 500 US dollars a month, inhabit the world not far from the beach where lives are snuffed out on a whim. No, este, Mariela González. Pero esto. The pictures will help in the investigation, but will the killer ever be found? It's unlikely. This just one more unsolved gang murder, another tagged corpse for the morgue. Back at base, a bit of downtime, a little lunch. 
but often being left alone with their thoughts is the worst time. Es muy, muy fuerte. Y es donde le digo que me vuelve sensible porque... Yo trabajo en un lugar donde veo violencia, donde salgo hoy, pero no sé si voy a regresar mañana a mi casa y voy a volver a ver a mi bebé. Que es como que sí, ahí me... Eso me pega duro por mi bebé, porque todo es mi bebé. Este, hay compañeros que, que han venido, a, llegan a trabajar y desafortunadamente ocurre un suceso y, y ya nunca más vuelven a sus casas. Entonces, este, de un tiempo para acá es como... Al menos yo me propuse que cada vez que salga de mi casa me despido de mi familia, mi mamá, mi hijo, mi esposo, si es que está descansando. Les digo que los quiero, los beso, los abrazo. Porque a lo mejor mañana ya no se los voy a poder decir. Va a salir y a lo mejor este... Dios no lo quiera, pasa algo y... Y ya no voy a este, ya no voy a poder disfrutar ese momento y quiero que ellos se queden con algo bonito de que este, que sepan lo que siento por ellos. The murders are getting more savage, more depraved. A taxi has been left abandoned in the middle of a busy highway. The driver has fled, but left behind in the car is a package. It's what, four o'clock rush hour here in uh, Acapulco, pulled up here, and the, the authorities are investigating this taxi. They opened the boot, and there in a cooler box was a head, a severed head. And in fact, the lead investigator has just told me that it's in fact the skin of the scalp, of the head, and not the skull inside. Incredible. It's the third severed head we've come across in three days. And with every execution, each gang is sending a clear message. Don't mess with us. It's been more than a decade since the government declared war on the drug cartels. High-profile leaders have been killed or imprisoned, but their replacements now lead smaller splinter groups, ruthlessly fighting for control of the drugs market, as well as extortion and protection rackets. And it's when night falls that there's money to be made. I got some coke, some ecstasy, um, some LSD. These drugs, you can get it from a cartel. Mm. Here, mm. it's easy, no? Everybody knows where you can get it. This former dealer didn't want to be identified for good reason. A conspiracy of silence helps protect the gangs. Break it and you could end up dead. So those drugs you showed me, they were for your personal use, but you used to be a dealer, didn't you? What was that like? I was young, you know, and we get some easy money and it's yeah, a dangerous it was, uh, business. You know, all my friends are dead already, you know? Really, all your friends are dead? Yeah, 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 because we are doing that, but not for a cartel. Just we are doing that for us, you know? And you have to do that for a cartel. They told us to stop, and we never stopped. Yeah. And they started to kill all my friends. So they were killing them because they were independent dealers? Yeah, you have, Acapulco is the, it's from the cartel, and you have to work for them, and if you don't work for them, they kill you. So we've seen all these dead bodies and we're wondering what is it that these people have done to deserve to die like that? Why do the cartels kill people? For it was a good cartel here. And Acapulco was good, you know, was no kidnapping, no extortion. It was good, but now it's not a, a stronger cartel in Acapulco, so it's all that death is because of that.
Another severed head is recovered from a crime scene, yet just yards away there are crowds of people. If they saw anything, they're not letting on. There are families here, there are kids, yet that headless body was dumped just over there, right next to them, but no one wants to talk to us there. They're obviously too scared. It's 8 p.m. and Luis has another grim collection to make. A man's been shot in the head a mother's only son. Como madre digo, me acaban de quitar a mi hijo. Siento que yo también me voy a morir. It's believed the dead man may have refused to pay a criminal gang extortion money. Porque me va a faltar la luz de mis ojos. Era mi único hijo. Ah, eso. Ya nadie me lo va a poder recuperar a mi bebé. Llegó la mala noticia que mi hijo no iba a llegar donde yo lo estaba esperando. Ya, Dios mío. <laughs> His name was Elvis Mendoza. He was 25. Now he's in Luis's care. Vivimos en una situación difícil. Sí. Se incrementa la ola de violencia. Te digo en in the pueblo hay temor, incertidumbre. Y como podemos ver, se ha hecho como ya costumbre para las personas ver este tipo de situación. Cosa que no deberían de ver. Es realmente penoso. For many of the thugs and killers responsible for so much of the violence on these streets. They learned their ways in the drugs trade, an industry that's worth many billions but makes life cheap. Well, we want to talk to some of those in the drug cartels who are ultimately responsible for all this. Just over a thousand miles away, up the Pacific coast, we take a midnight drive to a safe house in the state of Sinaloa. We were never told the exact location for our rendezvous. The cartel here is one of the most powerful in the world, and the man who's agreed to speak with us is a top lieutenant. He says it's the fracturing of the big cartels that's led to so much more violence. For years, things have been fine because we are unified. It's only one cartel, the Sinaloa cartel, and it's big. If you go to Jalisco or Guerrero, the fight is between criminal groups no cartels. It's because they are small groups, they murder each other, they kill innocent people, they decapitate innocent people, they hang innocent people. When we point out drugs ruin lives, he defends the business he's in, saying that no one forces people to become addicts. And he claims that many politicians work with the cartels. The government says corruption is rare and is determined to stamp it out. We get the government cooperation. They cooperate with the cartel. I can guarantee you everything is fine here. Drugs generate lots of money, and money makes people greedy. Sinaloa is not going to have a situation like that because we are already unified. We have arrangements and everything is okay. But other places in the South will not change because they are no cartels. They are criminal groups. 
back in Acapulco, just five minutes from our hotel, we came across a site that for many now defines this country. More blood flowing through Mexico streets, and this, the first of three murder scenes we visited in eight hours, and there were others. Mariela and Jorge reflect on a bloody week. The memory of that very public killing will linger especially for the tourists who saw what happened and have the pictures to prove it. Lo mataron y encima salieron normal, o sea, con la pistola en la mano se fueron caminando. Ya no me siento segura de salir ni siquiera a pasear porque pues pienso que hay que va a pasar otra vez. The sun sets on another grisly day with the gangs clocking up their 33rd victim in the 12 days we've been in Acapulco. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Así perdió. Because it's not fair that a child, or at the age of my children, are seeing situations like that. Executed, decapitated. Todo tipo de casos de muerte violenta, todo tipo de muerte violenta es sorprendente porque no trata de ver el más allá la magnitud del, del, de la cuestión. Este. Probablemente nunca se acabe la violencia, probablemente sí, no lo sabemos, es incierto, pero me gustaría que mi hijo viviera en un lugar más seguro, que creciera este, tranquilo, sin andar con miedo. And that's what everybody wants. But ordinary people here are exhausted and overwhelmed, stuck in the middle of a war on drugs that Mexico seems to be losing.